Here we are in Shores of Hazaron. I'm going to create a new avatar who is going to be the emperor of his own empire. This empire is going to start in the Shores of Hazaron galaxy. We'll move out to the western frontier just to be uh, a little more remote and uh, no, ap no overlord. I'm going to pick a flag, a dive flag that works. How about dive in? that's what we're going to do. We're just going to dive into this and see how it works. I'm going to take the uh, default human, but uh, uh, what you're doing here is designing the DNA of your guy. Uh, you can make all sorts of changes to individual things. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details here. I'll hit random a couple of times. That'll give us a couple of crazy starting points, and then you could use you could modify those to make them valid. A lot of times you'll see they'll come up with red down here, and they'll need some kind of change to make them uh, a valid starting character. Uh, sometimes all they need is a size change. The overall slider sl size slider is e easy to overlook. It's off here to the right, and this just literally scales down the size of the critter you're looking. Now this one is in a valid size range, uh, all my numbers are white. Uh, what you're working with here is these ability points that you have available uh, versus the ability points that you've used up. Uh, you can make changes over here to things like your strength. This thing has a strength of one. It's pretty weak. Uh, I'm going to give it some strength. And you'll see that the ability points uh, uh, get used up doing that. And uh, uh, you can create literally trillions of different creatures with this. We're going to just reset that. I'm going to be boring and stick with the uh, standard human and go create the avatar. Uh, this guy's gonna name is going to be uh, Diver Dan. And uh, he's going to be male and right handed. That's it. And now we're off into the universe. The servers are preparing a new homeworld for me at the moment that uh, is in a habitable uh, solar system that has everything I need to develop space travel. It will be in a system uh, on a world that no one's ever seen. I'm going to close a few of these things that I don't need right now. We don't need avatars online. We don't need our mission. And we don't need this yet. We'll come back to that. So, we've started out as a primitive caveman. There's a getting started guide that's going to start going here, and a character named Targos is going to run up and start telling me how to play this game. Now, I don't really like Targos, but I'm going to live through his beginning just because I want that torch. I'm going to let him go through his spiel. He's going to make me do... He's eventually going to let me have the torch and tell him to go away. I'll just be patient. Until then, we'll take a look around and see where, where we're at. This is a nice looking starting place. I, I like the forested areas. Sometimes you start in... Okay. This guy just wants to teach me how to look around and walk. That's about as far as he goes. Now my village is here. These are my people. They, uh, they look like me on purpose. It's because this is the DNA I started with. They would look like whatever you start with. So. Don't mistake them for some wild creature when you start up because you picked a wild looking creature as your starting character. Now he's talking about my hand. That's the cursor. If I just right click, it gives me this hand cursor and I can use that to operate all my stuff. And right click again and you're back to walking around. He's talking to me on this comm down here. I'm going to close the galactic channel because I really only want the voice channel right now. We don't need the hail channel. His tab, that's the only thing you ever see on that tab. It's kind of pointless. Don't need an intercom. 
Voice and thoughts. There we go. Yay. He's about to go away. He's teaching me that messages on the comm sometimes show up with this symbol, which means that I can click it and something might happen. I'm going to pick go away, I don't need your help. Yay. This torch is invaluable because it's going to get dark. And darkness just seems to last forever, especially if you have no light. He's still following me, but he's going to stop in a minute. I think he's done talking to me. Yeah, bye. Okay, here's my village, and uh, let's talk a little bit about the village. We're not in a hurry at this moment at all, because literally no one in the universe can detect my presence. And so I'm just this primitive indigenous people living on this planet. Uh, there's As long as I'm in the area of this village, near this fire, and among these tents, I'm reasonably safe from wild animals. And so I'm going to stay right in this area, because sometimes the wild animals in your environment very vicious. Let's talk about our village a little bit. It's useful and helpful. This man standing next to the, uh, or person, it could be a woman, standing next to the fire is the village healer. If you speak to the healer, the, the healer will heal you uh, if you're hurt. And the, the healer can also cure poison. So, uh, But that's as far as his primitive healing skills can go. One of these tents is the closest tent to the fire, and that's going to be this one. In that tent, we're going to find the village elder. Now, I'm, this person is always present, and uh, they are uh, have bits of wisdom to tell you, and will sometimes reveal the presence of interesting things on the planet, if you're patient enough to listen to them rattle on a few times. Uh, the adults of the village will often tell you about uh, interesting geological features in the area, and kids are of limited use. Now let's go talk to this guy. I'm going to walk up to him and I'm going to say hello on the voice channel. Now there's a hot key for this, but I'm doing this painfully slowly just to show you what's going on. We'll say hello, and oh, that's Targos. Never mind. He's actually not a villager. He's sent from somewhere else. He just happens to look like you. He is not indigenous to the planet. Uh, he came here. And uh, now this person is indigenous to the planet. I want to make sure only one person's in my general field of view when I say hello, otherwise I'll get answers from lots of people. What did he say? Some rocks, uh, okay, he tells me he's seen a meteor. All right. Uh, let's talk to the village healer. The village healer will make an assessment of your health when you talk to him. And uh, if you need help, if you need healing at that time, he'll heal you. Right now, he says, I'm healthy. Nothing's hurt me. Now, uh, what if somebody had something I wanted? Who's this guy? He's got a knife. How do these people have knives? They can't even make metal. Another guy with a knife. These are well-armed tribesmen. Although knives are, are painfully uh, inadequate against most creatures. Uh, you can trade with these people. Let's find out what this guy has. I'm going to ask him. You have to start out by saying hello to him. Otherwise, they, they're ignoring you. Now, I've got two people talking to me. I'm going to... I could position myself so only one of them can kind of see me. There we go. I'm going to talk to him. You don't actually have to be targeted on them to say hello. I want to make sure I only get an answer from one. Okay, now one guy's talking to me. I'm going to ask him what he has for sale. Use the I button to ask for sales. I'm going to just ask him for everything he's got. What do you got? Okay, he's got a bunch of stuff. Actually, several people answered. Everybody that I've initiated a conversation with is now answering me until they uh, think I'm done talking to them. This guy has some homemade wine. Uh, the healer has an antidote he's willing to sell me. And uh, various clothing. And Oh, eek, I, I'm, I'm naked. Uh, they have clothing and armor, and I don't. They want money for this, but I don't have any money. What do I have? Basically nothing. I have a knife, a piece of paper, and a torch. Now I haven't dwelled on this piece of paper. Uh, this is 
if you look at the tooltip on it, it'll give you some tips on how to get started. But uh, otherwise, uh, I'm going to ignore it. In fact, I'm going to see if he'll give me anything for it. Can I get those eggs for this piece of paper? You can barter with these people. They don't. You don't really have money yet in the game, but the money gives you a sense of the relative value of things. I'm going to offer. I'm going to make him an offer for these eggs. I'm going to right-click on the eggs, and I'm going to say, "Offer a bid." He wants the nominal price for this egg is 35 kronos. That doesn't mean that's how much he wants. That's what the uh, nominal price is. And I'm going to instead of offering him chrono dollars, which is the money of this universe, see what this piece of paper is worth. I'm going to give him one of them. It says this thing's worth uh, uh, five chronos. Well, that's not that's not much. I no way want to give him my torch or my knife. Maybe I can go find something that he'll trade me. Now remember, we're just kind of uh, enjoying life as a <clears throat> as a primitive caveman at the moment because uh, uh, we're not in a hurry to build a civilization. Uh, and some of this is illustrating the mechanics of how this universe works. I'm going to go over here. What's this interesting looking rock here? I'm going to look at it, and there's a button on the keyboard. It's the top left one on my keyboard. It has a little back tick quote, and squiggly mark on it. If I just hit that character while I'm looking at something, it tells me a lot of information that is enough to pinpoint this spot in the universe. If anybody in the game saw this message, they could come to this spot and find this piece of crystal. If you, uh, when you push that little tick mark, the message is broadcast on the uh, thoughts channel. So only you hear it. It's in your thoughts. But if you push the shift key when you uh, push that button, uh, it broadcasts it on the currently selected communications channel. Because sometimes you want you want to tell other people that information. Okay, that should have spoken on the voice channel. It did. Now, if I was on any like open channel, like the Galaxy channel, I would have gotten a confirmation message before sending that, because that would is a terrible blunder uh, that all, new players used to get pulled into early in the game in the old days. Was someone would convince them to broadcast their location in the by doing that. Okay, so we've got this crystal here. It was quality 165. That's what that Q165 is telling me. And uh, I'm going to click on it with my hand. And I I foraged the ground cover. I, I missed the, uh, the crystal somehow. They overlapped or something. Now it still thinks I want, I'm after the plants. How can I click? I got a crystal. Okay. I'm going to right click on this crystal and see what I got. I'm going to inspect it. Okay, I've got this little inspector window. Now this is a little uh, uh, two pane window. This side shows you what the thing looks like in the universe. That's what it looks like, more or less. And it's telling me its nominal value is 35 chronos. Hmm. Okay. Now I could keep trying to pick crystals here, but it's going to tell me I can't get any more here. I'd have to move to another spot. And really, if it's too close to that spot, it's going to think it's the same spot. Ooh, I, I got another ground cover seed. Great. I'm going to throw those away because they're not useful at this moment. Someday they might be useful, and uh, we'll find out what they're useful for. What other kinds of things are laying around in my environment? A nice, pleasant little valley. Now, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but there's this noise this scuffling noise going on. I, I'm lying on my belly here. That is the sound of a subterranean creature digging through the ground. I hope it's not mean, because it could come digging up out of the ground at any moment and attack me. And I'm going to just try to put it out of my thoughts. And go back to town. I'm going to see if I can't get something for some of these crystals. Well, that's an interesting plant. What do you suppose that is? The plants are not random. Every plant that you see is something. That plant, I'm going to look at it, hit my spot button. It tells me it makes plant fiber. Hmm, that's actually useful. I want that. I got some plant fiber and a plant fiber seed. I'm going to throw that away. With plant fiber, uh, 
I think I need two. I can, I can hand craft that into some fabric. I'm going to try doing some hand crafting here. I might normally do this in town, in my village, where I'm not quite so vulnerable. There's textiles using plant fiber. That's what I want to make, and it says I need, I have one of two, so I need another. Oh, there's two of these plants. I'm going to go try picking off of this one. I got another one. Excellent. Okay, so let's let's make a textile. There we go. I'm going to push the button, and I handcrafted a textile. Okay. What can I do with that? Well, one of the things I could make is a knapsack. That takes only one textile. I could make a backpack using textiles, which holds a lot more, but it takes two. And I, I kind of need something to carry things in right now, so I'm going to go ahead and make this knapsack. It takes one textile, but I can't make it yet. How come? Uh, on the right side here is a list of things that affect the process that you're going to run. Uh, in this case, uh, a sewing needle is required, and I don't have one. A sewing needle? Where the heck does a caveman get a sewing needle? Well, you handcraft one. How do we handcraft a sewing needle? I can make it out of a bone or a log. Alright. Logs should be easy to come by in the forest. And they are. Uh, you'll find that the most common tree in the forest that you see is going to produce logs. If you go click on the, on the trunk, you're going to get something from it. And in this case, I got what? Oh, I, a poor log, and I dropped it because I don't have any room to carry it. Okay, there, that's why I wanted that knapsack. Let's get rid of this seed er, and uh, see if I can pick up that log. I can't. Let's move some things around. I'm going to move this crystal to my belt at my waist. Now I've got a free hand. I'm going to grab this log and. Uh, starting to get dark out. Well, that's cool. Nice sunset. Beautiful. Whatever that is going on in the sky there is kind of cool looking. Alright, uh, I'm going to run back to my village and do a little handcrafting. And maybe a little bartering. Now some players are in a big hurry to hurry up and get their, their things going so that uh, they can get a spaceship. And uh, there just isn't any reason to be in a big hurry. Take your time. Uh, okay, we're back in our village. We should be safe from those things out there. I don't see anything moving yet. They're there, though. Okay, so let's go back to our handcrafting task. Let's make our knapsack. Oh, I, I have to make my, uh, my sewing needle out of a log. I could have made it out of a bone, too, but luckily nothing has died right around like me. And there we go. It was that that difficult. And now I have a sewing needle. I'm holding it in my hand. Uh, you have certain body positions you can carry things. The backpack is your is the back of your body or your torso or whatever you have in lieu of a body as a as you whatever race you are. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna what do we need to make now? Our backpack. A little knapsack. Before I do that, I'm just gonna I'm gonna do a general hello. How many of these people are in range? I'm gonna see if anybody here happens to have a textile. Sometimes the villagers do. And then I could make a backpack. It's just a lot bigger. What do you got? He has a, no, nothing I want. That Targos still. Yeah, he'll eventually go away. A little kid named Donies. Or domes. Okay, kid, what do you got? Got anything? Oh, no. Had some armor. You. What's your name? What do you got? <laughs> Everybody's answering me over and over again. How about you? What's your name? Rosie. Hi, Rosie. Uh, you don't happen to have any textiles, do you? 
I could ask specifically for textiles, but I don't mind seeing what else they have. Well, I'm not seeing any. Let's get on with this. I'm going to go ahead and take my knapsack. It's usable. Knapsack using textiles. I need one textile. I have one. The one I have is quality 51. That's fine enough for this stage of the game. Okay, we've got everything we need. Bang. We made our knapsack. There it is. At this point, I'm going to put my sewing needle in the knapsack, put my crystal in the knapsack, this piece of paper, and this knife. Oh, wait, I don't want the knife in there. I want that in my hand. Now, a weapon doesn't have to be in your hand to wield it. It just needs to be in one of your top-level uh, inventory positions. And my torch, I'm going to keep it at the top level, too, but I'm going to move it. I'm just going to shuffle things around. I want this thing on my back. There we go. And I'll carry my torch in my other hand just because. Okay. I'll get rid of this. And I'm going to use my mouse wheel to select between the things that are at my top level in my inventory list. That's these three items. I'll, and it would also uh, switch between my personal body attributes. Uh, in my case, uh, We'll come back to that. Here's my my foot. It shows that I can kick things. Uh, it does up to 13 points of bludgeoning damage, and it's a contact weapon. Let's keep going. My hand, I can punch things for up to 6 points of bludgeoning damage, and that also is a contact weapon. That means I have to touch it. Uh, it's not going to shoot across the, the room at it or anything. I can also bite. Uh, I have teeth. I can bite for piercing damage up to five points. And it also is a contact weapon, which means I have to actually get up there and bite them. Now, you, you really don't want to attack your villagers because you develop a reputation with them. They know who you are, and they'll remember you. If they hate you because you murder one of them, uh, you are not welcome in the village anymore. And... Uh, it, that will eventually wear off, but it takes a long time. Time is the healer there. Okay. Uh, what other items can I wheel between? I've got my knife. Now, my knife has two positions. You'll notice that position one, indicated by this tiny little one down here, shows these two icons. One of them is, it's kind of hard to see. One of them is a little, let's kind of look at that. One of them is a little cow head sort of thing with a leather on it, and the other one's a little cow head with a stake on it. Uh, with this knife, in that position, it will carve carcasses up into leather and, uh, and meat. But in that position, it doesn't work as a weapon. Don't wield it like that and try to kill an animal. You'll be, you'll, uh, you won't hurt it. One more wheel click, and we're going to see, oops, I'm going the other way. Where'd my knife go? There it is. And it shows me the knife in its position too. Every item has up to three positions that it can uh, uh, function in. Uh, position two, it shows me it does up to 20 points of piercing damage, but in it is also a contact weapon. And there's my backpack and my torch. And we're back to... Uh, oh, the torch also has two positions. One is the light position. If I click it there, or push U, I should say. If I push U to use it, it'll turn it on and off. Now, if I wheel the torch to the fire position, it can do up to eight points of fire damage uh, at, if I hit something with it. All right. Now, I'd like to keep my knife handy so that I can wield it. I'm going to wheel to that. I'm going to push Alt-1. When I did that, it mapped that particular position, which was my right, whatever hand that is, one of my hand, hand two, was mapped to item number two, that item in its mode two. So that's what that message was telling me. Let's go back to that thoughts message. It says position one, which was the key number one, was mapped to hand two, mode two. That's what that mode two was. So now at any time, if I happen to be over here, you know, I'm fiddling with my torch or biting something, uh, I can push one and it'll go back to my knife and uh, I can wield it as a weapon. That, that also works, that works for any of the positions you can select here. 
and uh, uh, including my body positions for like biting or kicking. When you are riding a riding animal, that riding animal's uh, body weapon attributes also become available in your list of, list of scrolling uh, options. So if, if it has, you know, laser beam eyes or something, which it doesn't exist, sorry, if it can shoot lightning from its eyes, uh, that would show up as an option down here. Uh, so here we are, nighttime in the forest. This place seems to have some glowing uh, things. The, the pink there, I'm pretty sure, is going to be some kind of a plant. Let's go take a look at what's going on here. Well, it is. What sort of plant is that? Ah! One. I want my knife. Now, when uh, who got hit? Me or him? Oh, me. I'm gonna hit him in the leg. I hit him. Okay. Okay. My health bar in the bottom left of the screen is getting lower. Now, in order to hit him, I have to see that little green bar. And you have to be close enough. Oh, he's hurting me bad. I'm running. Ah, something happened. I'm going to run back to my village. Uh, he should leave me alone then. Okay. Where's he at? He's moving around out there in the dark. Okay. Well, that was interesting. Uh, for almost getting killed. Let's go talk to the healer here. Hey, healer. Hello. Uh, and he healed me up a little bit. His healing is not very strong. He has. He, you may have to say hello to him uh, a bunch of times to, to get all healed up. And then he's done. Okay. Right. Now, I really wish it was daylight, because I'd like to... Uh, uh, see if there's an ocean or anything nearby. I'd like to go walk over by the ocean. But it's not. We're going to take a look at the night time. Let's, let's see what other things we can do here at night. I'm going to look at the map. Now you have a map of your world available to you. It's on your list of buttons over here. It looks like a little compass thing. Uh, look at the world map. Stretch it out. This is your map. Now it may or may not have the darkness areas on. You can turn on a, uh, where the sunlight is right now. And you can see where uh, where the sunlight is. It's slow to do that, and I actually don't want to do that right now because I just want to see the map. You can wheel in on this and take a look at it. Looks like we're way north, almost at the uh, Arctic Circle. Uh, we're in the temperate zone of the planet. Just above that is the polar zone. Uh, I'm going to back up on this map and just talk about it for a sec. The map is of a world, of a planet-sized world, is divided uh, into three main sections by these three, uh, I guess they would be longitude lines, and uh, those three main areas are referred to as its resource zones. And it's those in each resource zone, uh, all the resources are uniform throughout this zone. Uh, and what I mean by that is. Uh, the quality of the crystals, for instance, in my area, is going to be the same throughout this entire zone. But it is very likely to be different across the line in the next zone. And uh, it's very likely to also be different in the third zone. And likewise, the abundance of it varies. If in this zone, I might have a hard time finding oil or coal or metal. But it could turn out to be very abundant in one of these other areas. So uh, it pays to go exploring if you're not finding the things you need. Also, sometimes when you start, you don't, uh, you might not start somewhere that you find appealing. I, I like the forest. I like starting in the forest. Uh, sometimes you'll start out on an open plain somewhere where there's barely any vegetation, if any, and, and you and you might think, "Wow, this game doesn't have anything." For Oh, there's just nothing there. And uh, it's pretty much guaranteed that on your home world, somewhere, there is a forest like this. Uh, you might just have to go find it. <coughs> the vegetative areas are shown on the map with dense color. On my world, it happens to be dark green. 
it wouldn't have to be. Most worlds, it's some shade of green. Uh, some worlds, if the ground cover has a lot of dominant uh, fl bright colored flowers or something, uh, you might have uh, different colored uh, 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 vegetated areas on the, on the map. You can go absolutely anywhere on this planet. It, everywhere is accessible to, to you. Now it looks to me like some distance to the southwest is a coast, and at, from this coastline I could uh, travel the sea uh, to other parts of the planet. You'll find that through handcrafting, you can handcraft a sailboat. It's the only vehicle you can handcraft, but it's incredibly valuable and actually a lot of fun in the uh, early stages of exploring a world. Uh, these things that you need to make the sailboat uh, can be handcrafted. You can make lumber from a log. You can make, uh, let's take a look at that sailboat again. We already made textiles. Uh, we have a, uh, a sewing needle and we need a hammer. Uh, what would you need to make a hammer? A log or a, or a rock or a uh, uh, piece of lumber that we saw that we can make from a log. So uh, it's all there for you. You can handcraft it. That By looking at that map, uh, my estimate is that that is a pretty good walk. I didn't happen to create a race that can fly, and I'm, a walking human is relatively slow. Let's just head that direction, though. There's nothing stopping us. We might get there eventually. But it might take a while. We'll probably get killed on the way. Look at these green glowing rocks. Flawed radioactives. I'll grab it. You know, I never did trade my crystals to these guys. Maybe some armor would be helpful. They didn't really have anything in the way of weapons better than these knives. And that's probably about as good as it's going to get. Uh, let's see what these guys had. Did they... S you have to be close enough to them, too. For they should both answer. Okay, they did. Okay, guys, what do you got? What do you have in the way of just armor? That's going to include clothing. They have some leather clothing. Well, I'll take that. I can handcraft leather clothing, but right now I, I kind of just want to get geared up. Uh, they have it. I want to make him an offer for that leather clothing. I can handcraft leather clothing. I can't handcraft uh, woven body armor or leather body armor. I'm going to try to buy one. Whoa, holy cow, 653 chronos. What can I handcraft? Can I handcraft any armor? Can I handcraft that woven? Now the idea here is that they probably have some skill that I don't, or you know, that they were somehow able to have that. Seven chronos. Now, this interface is primitive. I, I can't. Uh, it'd be nice if I could offer him the radioactives and two crystals, but I can't. I can offer him only. Oh, I only have one crystal. I thought I got two. I bet I got it and dropped it because I couldn't carry it and, and didn't pay attention. Okay, so the uh, the armor is off limits. Maybe we can get this clothing. Looks like it's in my price range. I'm going to offer a bid. Uh, give him that radioactives. I'm sure he needs it. Okay. It wasn't worth quite as much. Yeah. He traded me. What did it say down here? He accepted my bid, and I now have some... Oh, there it is. There's his accepted bid. It's probably in my knapsack. I'm going to right-click on it and wear it. Yay, I have clothes. You'll notice that on my picture down in the corner. Your guy has clothes. Alright. He's got a hammer. I can make a hammer. This helmet is too expensive. Let's try the radioactives. Oh, 
what's he going to say? I think I offered it to the... No, one of them answered. It's, all, it's not good enough. He won't take less than 116. So actually, you'll you notice he'll take less than what its, uh, uh, what its value is in trade. Well, I can't get that. But that guy has... Looks like he has some eggs. Who are you? That's an oblub. Why didn't I see that? Oh, because I only asked for armor. I want that food. There's those eggs. Bad eggs, okay. I don't want to inspect them. I just want to eat them. I want to buy them. Offer bid. Here, you'd like this nice radioactives for those cheap eggs, wouldn't you? That's slightly more than what they're worth. Okay. All right. Well, we've got something to eat. We've got some armor. Let's head out and get slaughtered. We're heading to the southwest, and I'm running. Now, my stamina isn't too bad. I probably could have spent a few points on stamina and run a lot farther before I got tired. Once my stamina gets down to the bottom, I won't be able to run or jump. Oh, this hill's kind of steep. I'm going to have to go across. You can't just automatically run up every single steep hill. Now, is this sunset or sunrise? How much time has passed? If you watch it, sometimes you can tell which way it's going. Now, now, we don't want to look at the cloud movement. We're interested in the movement of the uh, stars and planets. It looks to me like the light is coming. So it's early morning. Awesome. Shift Q. I'm just run. Shift Q is the hotkey for running. Now I hear something sliding through the on the ground. I'm not sure if you can hear that on this video. So something is pursuing me. So I'm just going to run. I don't want to turn and look because it might catch me. It might turn out I'm faster than it and it can't catch up to me. I can, I can hear it though. What is that? Oh, one of the things that would have been really wise would be to grab a log. And why? Because with a log, I can make a fire. And if I make a fire, the it will deter the creatures, and it will give me a little bit of safety. I hear more footsteps. And it's dark. I'm looking for a tree. There's a log. It might not be a log tree. What is that? Poor stone. It is a log tree. Okay, grab the log. I'm going to keep running. Okay. <laughs> Hit my hand crafting thing here. And I'm going to look for... How the heck do I make a fire? Fire using a log. Somebody quick get me a fire. There. Just like that. I made a fire. <gasps> Holy cow. Please don't bite me. I think it's running from the fire now. That thing's big. I'm going to spot it. What is that? It's a big herbivorous reptilian. 312 hit points. Yeah, if it was after me, it, it was going to finish me off. Nice. Things are getting lighter. Very nice. This might turn out to be a good spot. I see water, but now I'm going to look at my map. There was a little body of water on the map. I must be at the end of this like lake thing. I'm not sure how far up there that went. Okay. Very curious what that orange blob is out there. It could be a very distant binary sun, but I really don't think so. It has an odd shape to it. Oh, I see. It's a moon. And there's a big, huge crater on the side. I don't know if you can zoom your screen like that, but it's really handy. That thing over there is munching away. Okay. What do we got the sun coming up? Are these more of those plant fibers? They are. Well, I couldn't have planned this better. Exactly what I wanted right now was some plant fiber. And look, plant fiber. I really didn't plan that. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're at a good point right now that uh, we've kind of seen life as a caveman on uh, on this planet. I, I'm not going to go through making a sailboat, uh, although it, it, it would be fun. 
that we're not at the sea yet. We would only sail as far as this body of water would go. Uh, we're about at the point that we might want to build our first city. A carnivorous avian, aquatic avian, hmm. with big fangs. As long as I'm by my fire, I'm, I'm safe. If I get too far from it, he, he might take notice of me. Now, I don't know if you can hear that. You can hear the sound of water. Oh, he's turning to come and get me. Run. Uh, sometimes you're in the water, but you can't see it. You know, you just think of it as, like, really, really muddy ground or something. But uh, when you hear that, uh, all it means is you're in the water. But, and, and it's just barely shallow enough you can't see it. Okay, he's sliding around. Here's my fire. Now, one of the things we're going to need... In fact, the one thing we are essentially going to need to make our uh, uh, start our city is going to be a flag. And we can handcraft a flag out of this plant fiber. I'm going to go ahead and make a textile out of it. Textiles using plant fiber. Oh, you need two. That's right. Where'd my carnivore go? I don't hear him. He probably didn't despawn. He's probably around here somewhere. If I hear him sliding, I'll run. Got some more plant fiber. I kind of moved as far as I could from where I had uh, picked that other one because they were kind of close. It's really based on proximity more than the physical plant. Okay, there's my two plant fibers. I'm going to make my textile, and I have it. And let's make our flag. A flag is needed to found a city. There's our flag. Now we're ready to found our first city. The sun is coming up. This is really going to be a great spot to end this video. Oh, I see. He's out there in the water. I think he was supposed to be aquatic. If he's aquatic, he's really not supposed to ever be on land. Aquatic, yeah. That doesn't mean amphibious. That means like a fish. He's supposed to be underwater all the time. He just got placed in some water that's only probably four inches deep. Okay. This is a nice cozy spot. We're going to end this video here. Life as a caveman in shores of Hazard.